every week and follow us here as we do this. Okay, just a second. Sorry. Uh, that was my fault. Um, I had us all muted. Thanks. Sorry about that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're good now? We're Started good. again. We are 100% okay, so, on, on the internet now. Okay, so a little technical difficulties there, but we're, we're back. It's been a couple of weeks. So we got, we're trying to get ourselves back in the groove here. Um, but we're going to go ahead, get together, play some Dungeons and Dragons, have a good time, and see if I can uh, scar a few more emotions here this evening. Yes, um, if this is your first time here joining us at the Games Tavern, um, please make sure you follow us here on Twitch. It's free, help, and it definitely helps support us, the cast, the crew, everybody in the background trying to make things happen for this. Um, also, don't forget YouTube. Every We stream live every Monday, but YouTube, about 48 hours later, the videos should be uploaded so that you can go ahead and get caught up in all the previous episodes. We've gotten quite a bit into the story, so if you missed anything, you may want to go back and check it out. Definitely looking forward to getting going. I've missed this crew right here. Glad to be back. But uh, before we go ahead and get started, we do have a few announcements for you. So uh, remember, if you have Amazon Prime, you also get a free gaming subscription, which you can use to show your support for the cast and crew. Um, Prime gaming subscribers get access to the sub-only emotes and to a special subscriber-only channel on the TGT Discord. So make sure you hit that button. Um, and remember, you have to come back and do it every month if you want to keep supporting us. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your support. Um, it really means a lot to all of us here. Um, and cheering on uh, your favorite character is a great way, great way to show more support. Uh, remember, when you cheer 500 bits, we will uh, award inspiration to a random character. But if you spend 1,000 bits, uh, then you can choose which character gets that inspiration. And we are uh, starting here. So ugh, let's do our best. Um, a humongous thank you to Overhead Games for sponsoring the show. Um, go to overheadgames.com or check it out yourself by clicking the link in chat. Tonight, that's tonight during this game right now, during this game, tonight. Thanks to our sponsors, we are giving away an epic character generator sponsored by Overhead Games. The raffle for the package will begin shortly and we'll continue to take entries until the end of the stream when we pick a winner. So type hash, uh, hashtag, wrong things. Type exclamation point epic. Once you see the notice in the chat and the raffle is live, you must be a follower to enter and must be present in the chat for the staff to contact you to win at the end of the night in chat present to collect your prizes. Yeah, so definitely don't go anywhere. Um, you definitely don't wanna miss what's uh, about to befall these young adventurers here. But um, to go ahead and recap from two weeks ago, so our adventurers had found their missing companion biscuit. They recovered him from a grove that they discovered was conducting some dark experiments with dragon marks and tattooing aberrant dragon marks onto people. So um, they once they found biscuit though, they recovered, they burnt down the cabin through a, quite a bit of effort until Biscuit decided to go ahead and do it for them. Good boy. As they left the grove, they made their way towards the Mornlands in search of the ship that they had traveled on but two years ago that went down on the day of mourning in search of some Sybaris dragon shards to help assist the residents of New Seer. Upon arriving at the Mornlands, our adventurers decided they were going to take a rest just outside of the dark gray mist to go ahead and make sure they take a full night's rest and then go first thing in the morning, go in, get what they needed and come right back out. However, one of our adventurers, Echo, having received dreams in the past of the Mornlands and images of her family involved in the morning, ran headlong into the dark gray mist. With the rest of the crew following her, they made their way towards the ship where Echo slowed down when she came across a group of Clawfoots who, as they ran away, were attacked by a undead Tyrannosaurus Rex. The crew trying to avoid being eaten, becoming zombies themselves, tried to hide within the ship. And as the T-Rex came towards them, 
Biscuit, their faithful companion, distracted the T-Rex and lured it away from the group. However, in the conflict, Biscuit was injured severely. Upon arriving back at the ship, Biscuit crawling barely within an inch of his life, Steel remembered that there was different things within this ship, war-forged parts and various machines that he could utilize to try to save Biscuit. And after a little over an hour, our crew was able to save the life of Biscuit, though now he is more machine than dog. And after this long morning, because it's only been about five, six hours, as your heart rate begins to calm down, the adrenaline of everything that's gone on over the last hour sets in or goes away. I need everybody to give me a constitution saving throw, please. Oh boy, is that nice? So oh God, what, what dice, what dice, what dice? Ooh, the, <laughs> the left one. Ah, um, um, you say saving throw? Yes. That is a 23. Okay. I too got a 23. Okay. 11. 20. Oops, 11, 20. Okay. 20. Steel. You're muted. You're muted again. I I <laughs> hold on, I'm pulling up I'm pulling up too many things at once. Okay, con save was uh twenty, non natural. Okay, so all of you, as you're calming down from this, you all just feel the air sting in your eyes and you feel burning in your throat. Halceris, this is you just start coughing uncontrollably from this. You take a point of exhaustion as the air around you just has this fume to it. Roger, Roger. What are you all doing? Crying secondhand smoke tears. <laughs> the biscuit lies on the table, kind of metal tongue kind of licking at the table. <laughs> metal tail just slowly going back. It's the forth. licking kind of making a weird like it is making noise. that that kind of metal on metal scratching oh. noise a little bit. Oh biscuit, biscuit, no. Oh god, biscuit got it. There's out. nothing on the table for you. <laughs> I'm just going to turn to Biscuit. Calm down, bud. And he just kind of looks over at you, kind of cocks his head off to the angle a little bit. The sooner we find what we are looking for, the better. Um, I am going to the, I'm going to the bridge to see if there's some way to turn on the lights um i'm gonna make my way trying to remember the layout of the ship uh the bridge was on the top deck if i remember yes uh, yep so, so the bridge was up towards the bow of the ship on the top deck um rose gonna take her whip out and follow okay what are the rest of you doing i go the opposite direction from them okay so you're going towards the back of the ship I will follow. Yeah. Back. Last time we were here, I was I fought Echo. I tried to fight Echo. Stood in a corner and stood in a pilot's. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm. Uh, I, I kind of want to take a look around the ship. Okay. So you two are heading towards the back. How Saris and Ro are heading towards the the top front. Steel. What are you doing? Um. I will do the same. Uh, I will head to the back um, to look for um, whatever, for more of the crates that we saw on our, our first visit to the ship. Okay. All right. So we will start off with how Saris and Ro, as y'all start approaching, are you trying to go to the top of the ship from inside or outside the ship? 
probably from inside i would say just to keep out of uh i i if i remember correctly like it was just kind of blasted wasteland outside so yeah i'm gonna assume the inside is a little bit less dusty kind it's of. less dusty um however there is a lot of damage to the hull. um and as you start to go up one of the ladders you see that there's about a four foot gap and where the ladder is that's just a hole going through the side of the ship what uh what shape is this hole is it kind of like a a giant mechanical walking thing could have no this looks like it was probably kind of ripped apart because it hit something as it Mm. was crashing down this is Mm -hmm. this is not the giant hole that was left behind by the large war forged okay okay just just checking (laughs) Uh, yeah, I will uh, point out, uh, and as we're going, um, I'm just going to keep eyes just constantly on, I don't think I'm looking so much for uh, active threats as I am structural integrity, looking for any more cracks or breaks in the hulls or in ladders. Okay, um, as you're looking at that, you just, you see a lot of the boards and stuff on the side, they're cracked, some are smashed in, there's big holes just everywhere, the ship was took a lot of damage when it went down luckily for you all you were not aboard the ship when it actually went down you were able to your pilot sebastian the half orc that you all met in um sharn had managed to get it low enough and slowed it down enough where you were all able to get off of the ship before it crashed into the ground and into the mist that you had all seen coming towards you. Does this place feel kind of like being back in a in a not great dream to you? I don't, I don't know if it feels like a bad dream to me. It, honestly, it feels more like a, a how you say ghost house is a haunted version of what it should have been broken and cracked a former yeah. a shade of what it should be and uh, we were almost haunting it so there's that I suppose um, yeah uh, look on silver linings is good um, I believe it is this way uh, do you remember I think it is this. I, I assume if we go up and forward, we are going in the right direction. As you get up towards the top of the ladder, you do see where the ha- door for the hatch was that went up onto the deck that is completely missing. Okay. And you're able to climb up onto the deck. And you are currently standing in between what you know as the pilot's nest at the front of the ship. And right behind you is the captain's quarters as well. Both doors on both of these rooms are completely gone. So uh, what what are we looking for? I think uh, it would be in our interest to see if there is uh, any form of power left in the ship. Uh, perhaps it can light, uh, give us a little bit of light, give us a little clarification and pray, maybe even some defense. Um, so I think we should check in here. Um, this is good time. We will work on our maneuvers. Um, so this is for to breach. So if you want to, I will push the door and then you look inside to see if anything is there. Got it. So there, there's no doors. The doors are oh, completely gone. <laughs> perfect. Good. What good do we teamwork. do if there's no door? Then we both come to sides of it and then look in at the okay, same time. Okay, so okay. we will not be surprised. So we're like, <laughs> okay so Should which I... which you're going to the uh pilot's nest first first yep okay so as you you all look in you see the wheel that was that's used to steer the ship is half missing you just see all the windows that were in front of this ship are just smashed out there's the six crystal displays that you all saw that gave you all the warnings on the ship are all cracked. Some of them are just half broken, laying on the floor. And you do see in part of the steering wheel, a dagger. 
just sticking out of the steering wheel. Does it have a familiar insignia or anything? It does. One that you are very familiar with. It is the symbol of the Boromar clan. Yeah, Boromars. <laughs> All right. Um, and I'll, I'll let Ro go ahead if she sees that and she looks at it. Um, as she walks in the doors first, I want to turn around. Um, how does the elemental binding rings look, the uh, apparatus? So they are all smashed. Smashed pieces. Yeah, yeah there is no recovery of that. You see the three, the three prongs that kind of come out that the elemental goes around and they're just broken in half. Mm -hmm. You can actually kind of see the top half of it laying on the ground if you look over the side of the ship. I just shake my head and turn. Uh, what have you found? Rose going to grab it and yank it out. <laughs> okay, so you've got the dagger. They are following us everywhere. Just, just everywhere. I'm so sick of seeing this damn insignia. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, but I do not believe the... I mean, they followed us a few years ago, but I don't think this is a recent... More of a symbolic following around. Of course, of course. I am sorry. Uh, it, uh, my lungs are burning quite badly out here. Um, but yes, uh, it is hard to get out of the shadow of the Boromars. That it is. Yeah. And as y'all are having this conversation, we're going to go back down below deck to Terran, Echo, and Steel as you all make your way back towards the rear of the ship. You notice that the orrery that was at the bottom of the ship is completely gone. So as you get into the base of the ship, you're walking on just ground. And you work your way back towards the storage area where all the warforged had been chained up to the walls. And you do not see any sign of a warforge anywhere. So none of the previous warforged that we saw are there. Right. The ones that you and Ro meticulously took and reattached to the walls to try to balance the load of this airship are all gone. I swear last time we came, weren't there machines here? <laughs> Lots of them. Lots of them, yeah. <laughs> where, where did they go? Uh, <laughs> we don't want to know. I'm uh, just we don't, you don't, I don't think we want to know. We just need to get, get, get her load and get, get out of here. We need, that's it. We need to get out of here. Well, what if the load's not here? I mean, if these things are missing, like what's the guarantee that that's going to be here too? I mean, if that's the case, then I guess we don't get paid. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. We just gotta, gotta go see if we can find what's here. And if it ain't here, then we go, we go home empty handed and you know, all we can do it'll suck hey we found biscuit right so we came for, we got that's what we the real for. treasure i guess um, and as you say that you see biscuit is just slowly following behind you <laughs> um is there any way to indicate what could have happened in this room or give me an investigation check okay Uh, 14. So with a 14, you see the ground at the base of this because the whole bottom of the ship, even in this part, has been kind of scraped away. You see a lot of humanoid-sized boot prints just going in all different directions. But you see a large amount of them heading towards a large hole over in the side of the ship. And it almost looks like something broke through that ship from the inside out. From the inside out. I'm going to point to the footprints and be like, I, I feel like someone was here and stole something, but I don't know. What if, what if they took whatever we're looking for? I think we, we just got to go, go for that crate wherever it is. Yeah, that's true. It's not that's in this room, right, DM? No, so there was another storage room. There's just another a little storage. bit up. Okay. Yeah. It was right um, below the 
Warforge lab that where you all did the emergency procedure on Biscuit. Okay. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, it was very heavy previously, correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. You and I think you and Ro, if I remember right, tried, tried to move and one of the crates. Failed and, miserably. Okay. Yeah. You so, all did not move it. Uh, Steel, I'm gonna. If if it's still there, I'm gonna need all the help I can get from you because it's very very heavy and we weren't able to move it at all. Okay. Yeah. That should all be. Right. We, can, we can make that work. All right, Taryn, are you heading up back up there with them? Uh, or you if there's down? nothing. If there's nothing in this room, like at all, like it's if it's bare, then yeah, I'll head up. But yeah. if it, you see broken chains lying around, but that's it. As if this place how, has been. How, hmm? how big is it? How big are the chains? Are they, are they like? So they're, I mean, probably about good two inch steel chains, but say the different segments of them. You got some that are only a couple links. You got some that are about ten links or so. It looks like the chains that were holding these warforged up have been snapped okay. or cut. Can I can I grab a bit of chain uh, that has a hook? I'm assuming on the end of it. Okay, yeah, it's got a small little little hook to to hit that. Yeah. Can I uh, grab that with a bit of chain? Okay, so you get the piece. You get it's about three feet long with okay. this chain. It's got a small little, and it's just one of those little like steel hooks that you would latch onto something. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So you grab that as you all head up to the storage area. You get up into the storage room where all those crates were before, and you see all those crates still there. However, they are all smashed open. You just see the wood just all broken apart, laying all over the floor, covered, there's a little pile of wood off in the corner. I knew this what could happen. Um, so, yeah. Is there, there's nothing left in, in those crates? It's, or if we go Do you want to go? You yeah, go I want to go see Ona. Like, okay. maybe there's something. Give me an investigation check. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, a, that's a four. That's a four. Yeah, you're not finding anything. Take a look. You're going to look too? Okay. Sure. Let's see what we got. Investigation, right? Yes. All right. Bounty Hunter powers activate. Form of 17. Okay, with the 17, as you start to look through this rubble in this room, you shift aside some of the boards, you pull a couple pieces of wood off to the side, and you see a small amber like glint from almost like some sort of gem coming from underneath the large pile of wood. So as you approach it, you start pulling it away, you find a small amber crystal broken in half that looks like it had different veins going through it that are a very dull goldish color. It's safe to say this is what we're looking for. As I turn to Echo and Steel. What is it? I'm going to take it to kind of look at it. Okay. Um, give me an Arcana check. <laughs> I, I see Echo's confusion. I was going to say. <laughs> I mean, Steel, you know, you know, you're looking at this. This is a broken Sybaris dragon shirt. Yeah, I got a nine on that check. So Okay, you, think... you, you know it's some kind of dragon shirt. Is there more of where this came from? So as you start digging through that, you find three more, but they are all broken. Are they all separately broken or are they like, is one broken in half? So you've got one that's like broken in half. There's another one that's kind of fractured into three pieces. But you got, uh, if you were trying to put them together, you would come up with about four dragon shards. 
but steel you looking at these you you can tell that the magic that was within these is not there anymore i bag them uh still okay. well it's better than having nothing and then i'm gonna i'm just gonna get a little frustrated and i'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna say, you guys, you guys keep searching for a minute. I'm gonna, I wanna see if I can speed the process up a little bit, maybe. And I'm gonna uh, do a ritual to get uh, detect magic up. Okay. All right. So we'll go back up to Halceris and Row. Uh, you all look through the pilot's nest. I'm looking through, uh, like, the helm and everything in the control panels. Um, knowing how Terran activated it before, can I stand on the foot pedals in front of the helm and see if there's any ignition okay. sequence? So a as you step on there, there's no... You don't hear any noises. There's no reaction of any kind from the ship. Well, she's not doing too hot. No, I'm. Uh, I'm afraid her flying days are probably behind her after this. Um, it, would it be possible for me to make uh, a quick investigation or a kind of check to see if uh, there are any pieces here? I know it is mostly broken, but components inside the pieces that perhaps steel would be able to use, or um, okay, or, go ahead, give me. Investigation. Investigation. Yeah. Don't worry. It's at disadvantage because I'm <laughs> coughing so terribly. Yes. Yeah. Do the uh, <laughs> you're starting to look through stuff and it's, the coughing's just getting a little worse and a ah. little worse. Don't worry. It's a five. That's Ro, all I got. <laughs> Row is. I'm occasionally just like you know, like thumping him on the back. Like, you good? Oh, no, no, we are in a terrible place. <laughs> Terrible. I'm actually at one point. I think I'm just gonna like have enough of it, and I'm going to uh, cast the gust cantrip and just try to like move okay. air away from me. <laughs> just <sighs> okay. So <laughs> you you do the cantrip. You kind of see it kind of go away, and then it just comes right oh, back in. Man. Oh, you made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid there is nothing here that uh, is going to be of any help to us. Yeah. We want to check the captain's quarters. I perhaps Sebastian left us something in there, but I think it is time to find the others. Yeah, sounds about right. And uh, I'm gonna pocket the knife. Okay, so you pocket the knife and head to the captain's quarters. All right, as you walk in, this place looks like it has been turned several times. The bed's just an all an angle up against one of the walls that's still remaining. Just there's books and papers and just garbage is scattered all over this room. Go ahead and give me an investigation. Can I tell you what? You? No, tell you what, I'm gonna aid you. You oh, you okay. go ahead and take that. <laughs> sure, sure. Can I advantage it? Yes, and do not forget, um, looking at this, I do believe that Ro and Echo both still have inspiration too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. Wait. Uh, I roll. Oh, okay. It's a six and a nine. I was like, excuse me. Wait, but that means it is a six and a nine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As you start looking through, you're, you're just finding torn up clothing. Um, just not really a lot, but there is one thing that does catch your eye. As you're going through moving some of the books and stuff, you find a book. The title of the book is called Leadership and Battle Tactics. Ah, nice. She's gonna she's gonna look at that and look at how Sarah's and be like, "We're gonna be reading that." Well, I'll read it. You'll read it. You'll <laughs> you'll explain this, right? Uh, you got it. No, it's important to read. It's important more, to keep at least one book going at the time. More of a it's visual learner, really. <laughs> 
Well, you did. So you did notice that while you kind of looked through it real quick, there are pictures and diagrams of Great. different maneuvers and stuff like that. Love it. What did, what was it called? Leadership and tactics? leadership and battle tactics. Perfect. If only it was a romance novel. Yeah, I mean, you, you haven't read already. it enough. You haven't read it enough to know it's not. <laughs> Damn, all spare in love and war. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, that's all you're actually really able to find of interest within the captain's quarters. Should we uh, go see if they found any dragon shards? Yes, uh, keep your fingers crossed that they had more luck than we did. Okay. As the two of you leave the captain's quarters, you hear a large or loud thumping off in the distance. It's just a very slow boom. Boom. If I if I pull out a glass of water real quick, does it do I have the like ah. ripple effect in it? Ah. <laughs> no. Okay. Why Jeff Goldblum? No. And um, as... I will oh sure. No go ahead. I would say ahead. I would uh, um, kind of, do I hear any like point? Like, is it coming from the east? Is it coming so from the west? It seems to be coming from towards the back of the boat, but it sounds like it's very far away. Um, perhaps it is uh, better for us to pick up the pace and get out of here. Yep, I like the sound of that. Yep, yep, yep. Oh. And As gonna... you look off in that direction, you just see a large shadow in the mist. From this distance, it looks like this thing may be two to three hundred feet tall. Just moving slowly across the horizon. I think we should warn the others, and I think we should be very quiet for a while. I, I think I think initially Halceris thinks it's the T-Rex coming back having seen something can i make it to the aft of the ship on the deck yeah like is it is it yeah, all i mean you gotta you gotta kind of avoid a lot of holes and, sure. and pitfalls and stuff but you can make it yeah i i'm like almost in a daze like looking at it like in a form of like almost fascination like okay. moving to the back to try and get a better look at what this could be uh yes. there's just just um uh, it... Let's not draw attention to ourselves. Give me a history check. Right. Which will be at disadvantage. Oh, great. Heart rate is like... I'm too excited. I don't know what it is, but I'm excited. I have, I have a plus six. I have essentially expertise in this. And I rolled in that one. So that's a seven. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. You, can, you do not have any idea what this might be. Like if Ro comes up, it's like that is. I have no idea of anything that size. That is impossible. Look, I don't know if we want to know what that is, but I know that. And she's. I'm gonna like, like you know, just like whip. I. This is not gonna do anything against whatever that is. So let's. Of course. Of, of course. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, my apologies. It, let's, yes, let us get out of here as uh, quick as we can and uh, make our way uh, down. I think I think there were, if memory serves, there were hatches to go down from the yes. back of the ship as well. So yep. we'll just make our way down. Okay. So as you make your way down, you start to come into that back part of the ship where you had all those Warforged and you see the same thing where none of the Warforged are there. And as you reach the bottom, you see the footprints and you see that hole in the side of the ship. Uh, uh, what? Wasn't there a, a big old dude? There was. There was uh, the largest dude I have ever seen produced. Um, that is quite uh, disconcerting. I think uh, even quicker now. Let us get out of this place. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This place okay. gives me the willies. Okay. So about an hour has gone by with 
everybody going through looking at these different areas. I need everybody to go ahead and give me another constitution saving throw, please. Wait. Hey, steel can make me a new pair of lungs, right? That's cool. We got more <laughs> forge parts around here. Uh-huh. Uh, 20 for me. Uh, 20. Dirty 20. Okay. <clears throat> 15 uh, here. 15, okay. 15 as well. Okay. Um, 16. 16. Go. Okay. Uh, you're muted, Taryn. 12. 12. Okay. So, again, as you all are searching through, you feel the air just starting to burn your lungs even more. And you all are okay right now. I mean, Taryn, you do feel like you're about to start coughing up a lung, but you're kind of, you kind of hold it back a little bit. I'll take it out right now. Your lung? (laughs) (laughs) Take it out before it takes me out. Okay, so with that, we're going to go back to Steel, Taryn, and Echo. What have Uh, I found? So those shard pieces are the everything that you were able to find. You got a lot of loose wood and that's about it. Do I see do I see any magic uh anywhere? Okay. Right. So with your detect magic ritual, you get a very, very faint mm. magic from the shards that you all found. But that's it. Nothing else is giving any aura of magic. Just the stuff that you have on you that's magical. Uh, none. I don't see any of the crates or anything like that. Uh, no. It's almost as if all magic from this room had just been kind of sucked out. That's concerning. Or. I'm going to take whatever dragon shard is broken in half and like try and click it back together. Obviously, it's not going to do anything, but I want to walk up to Steel and be like, do you have anything that could could mend it or or make it whole again? I cast some mending. You know how Ceres does? Just hold it together. Okay. I'm going to cast mending on it and see if I can make any. Okay. So as you cast mending over this crystal, you see the veins in it start to glow a little <laughs> brighter gold, and then just whoosh, zoom back out, kind of fade away again. That's, that's pretty much the best I got. <laughs> I, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't nothing. Maybe it's missing something that could help. I mean, it's a dragon shard, so um, if we had a dragon mark for creating, then maybe we could make one, but or fix one. But I, I highly doubt that I can do anything short of, of having that specific dragon mark. Um, so, so you do remember as you're having this conversation that Sybaris dragon marks are, as every child in Eberron knows, are the rumored pieces of one of the original dragons, Sybaris, who now currently floats around the world in a ring going around the planet that you can see from the ground at night. You see the large stream of just these shards floating around there. Then from time to time, these shards do plummet the back down to the ground. And this is rumored to be the source of all magic within Eberron. I mean, hmm. they might still have a pretty good use. We can take them back and see. Okay. Should we head back? I don't, yeah, I don't think there's yeah, anything we should, else for yeah, us here. Yeah, I want, uh, there's no magic. I'm, I mean, it's up for 10 more minutes, so we'll we'll take a... As we uh, head out, I'll see if I can see anything, you know, move, moving have, about the cabin. Have Halceris and I kind of made it back to them at this point? Yeah, you've kind of... As they're kind of coming back down, you're coming back from the rear of the ship. And you all kind of meet up with each other. Um, where those crates were, um, are there any signs of like them have like have like being moved because they were really heavy right they were smashed into they were right okay so i'll just take all the shards and like put it put it like on my shirt and like hold it up and walk over to hell and i was like 
This is all we could find. Let's take it back and uh, see what we can do. Bad off can do it this time at this point. It's good. It's good to know that this trip has been completely <laughs> worth it. <laughs> I think it is best that we get out of this place now. Okay, yeah, let's go. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Are y'all going back out the way you came in? Is there another way to go out? I mean, you can go through those large holes that the Warforged left. I said, there you go. I think no. we should go the, the way we came in. Okay. <laughs> that's, uh, that's relatively safe. Okay. So yeah, as... I'm not trying to fall into a horde of warforged. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so as you all go to depart the ship, you get to the entrance that you can't have came running into, and you see kind of out a little ways, maybe about 40, 50 feet from the entrance of the ship, you see what looks like a horse. <laughs> Almost like it's grazing. You see the back end. It looks like it looks like this may this horse may have been white at one point, but it's dirty, dingy, a dark gray, almost greenish. Is it just chilling 40 just, to 50, 50? So it, you, you can't see its head because its head's kind of down. You just kind of see- Its butt? Like, yeah. You've, do we you see how see long it's, it's, do we see its neck? Like, is it? No, you can't. Mm. Because it, it's current, turned completely away from you at the moment. For sure, That's, is it a horse or is it something else that looks we, like a all horse? All we to know us? that it's a horse's butt. Yeah. I did. Someone want to whistle, or should I just? Oh, I'll whistle. I'll whistle. I draw an arrow. <laughs> you whistle. No. As you whistle, you see a head pop. The head of this horse pop up and look over at you. And what you all see is the side of the neck of this horse has been torn out. You see this, its sides torn open. You also see its eyes are glowing a dark red. And you see a horn sticking out of its forehead that looks almost pure black. So my whistle goes from... <laughs> <laughs> It turns around and looks at all of you. Demon unicorn, demon unicorn. And it starts to charge. Go inside, go inside, I need go everybody inside. to roll initiative. God, of course. Can I fire the arrow that I drew? Yes. Yeah, I will let you do that at the t as we start the top of the round. But I need everybody to go ahead to battle map one for me, please. Wonderful. I go the animal handlers. <laughs> Um, so, fun thing, uh, DM is totally your ruling. Uh, in rules as written, uh, initiative is actually a dexterity check. Yes, it is, which so, means you have disadvantage. Disadvantage, good, good, yep. good, good. All right, just making sure we got that going. Yep. Oh, that is hilarious. Cool, cool. <laughs> I, I knew that it was a bad idea, and my whole heart said, do it. And that's why the arrow was not knocked. Not, not. Oh, wait, what is it? What's the word? 14 not. for for a row. Okay. Uh, 19 Four. for Echo. 14 as well for uh, Terran. The 9 for Halceris. 9. Sarah's got a nine row, and Taryn, you said you both got what? 14. 14. So who's going for uh, What did you get, Steel? Um, 13. 13, okay. Who has the higher decks, Taryn? <laughs> who has the higher decks, row? Who, do who does? I'm, I actually don't know. No. What's your decks? With your decks. <laughs> All right. Now. <laughs> so tell you what, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna roll a D twenty. Well, no, I'll roll a D six. Odds Taryn goes first, evens Ro goes first. Fine. 
I rolled a two. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. So Ro will go before Tyrion. He's still ready to fight, is that Ro? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, go ahead and place yourselves on the map just outside the ship. Sure thing, boss. Right around where the, um, like that down tree is towards the top there. That's not me. This that unicorn looks so nice.
shoot out instead. And let's attack the bad boy. All right, give me the attack roll. Ooh, uh, that is a 24. 24. 24 is gonna hit. Yeah, gonna hit that. So doop doop. Let's roll this d8 real quick. Plus three, and that is a six plus three. This is nine damage from the arrow and the ensnaring strike, which I cast, which I cast it. So they have to make a strength saving throw. Strength saving throw. What's the DC? DC 12. 12. 12, it succeeds. Ah, oh, gosh, darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it. <sighs> well, uh, that's the, I mark it as my favorite foe. Okay. I should do that. Yeah, let's, let's, let's favorite foe it. So that's an extra D4 after it got smacked with the arrow, but it broke through. Okay. Uh, D4. One. So One. 10 damage. 10 damage from Terran. Okay. All right. So as you fire, you see the vines start to kind of come up, and it, the legs on this thing just kind of kick them away, and it breaks loose from them. All right. Steel, you are up, followed by Halceris. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, I'm going to shoot it. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> what are you shooting That's it with? easy enough. The, um, my tinkered, uh, crossbow. Okay. That's right. Yeah. You took that back from, uh, row. <laughs> okay. Give me an attack roll. Doing it right now. Let's see here. Uh, <laughs> let's see. 15. 15 no, is. Yeah. Yeah. 15. Okay. 15 hits it. Okay, and a D8. That's uh, seven points of force damage. Okay. Uh, Okay. And I'm going to use my bonus action, and I am going to uh, look at uh, Biscuit. I'm going to say, Biscuit. All right, boy. Let's (laughs) test out those new uh, chompers we got in there. And uh, I'm going to send him out, and he's going to make an attack. Okay. So uh, let's see here. Um, Biscuit's going to bam right about there. And i got to see what his attack is, because it's the first time we're using it. Um, yes. Force-empowered rend. Okay. Uh, yeah. That sounds lovely. I know, right? 19 <laughs> to hit. Well, that's... It's a 19 to hit, so I'm assuming yep. that hits. Yeah, that and, hits. And that is a 11 points of force damage. Okay. No, wait. Nine. Sorry, sorry. Oh, okay. And oh. let's see. Hey, you just see Biscuit just goes up and just tears a chunk of flesh out of this thing. Oh, Hell biscuit, yeah. spit that oh. out! Spit that out! You don't know where it's been. <laughs> no, you actually, you actually see as he bites down. There's almost like a, a purplish electric charge. It goes out of his mouth into the into the creature's hide. Nice, sterilizing it. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, the ch- a chunk of its flesh still just kind of falls away. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Steel? Uh. No, that that'll be all. Uh, wait a minute, where am I standing? <laughs> That's important. I'm gonna. <laughs> is there is so are we right up against the wall or is there like uh? So that that's kind of the edge. Of, there's a there's a hole right behind you. That's the hole you just came out. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, just on the map, you're kind of seeing the top of the ship. Can I if I if it, is it okay? Can I get like right there? Like up? Yeah. Is it, like is that difficult terrain or anything? Uh, not really. It's just, okay. it's old, dried, almost petrified wood. So you're able to just kind of trample over it pretty easily. Okay. I'm going to stand behind El Saris. All right. Um, uh, yeah, let's, let's kill a thing. <laughs> All right. How Saris, you're up. Uh, how's this thing looking? Uh, undead, I trust, but I imagine it, is it. It looks dead. <laughs> ah, good. Does it look uh, like it 
Yeah, I do. Uh, it, it doesn't look, look like it's quitting anytime soon. Anytime soon. Okay. Cool. Uh, all right. I am going to um, <laughs> look behind me and steal. Like, what are you doing? I don't understand. Ah, fine. Uh, roll, heads up. And I'm going to move slightly to the left and grab my holy symbol and worked on the last one. And I'm going to cast a guiding bolt. Okay, give me an attack roll. This one's not a disadvantage, finally. Yep, no, attack rolls are not a disadvantage. Uh, 15 to hit. 15 hits it. Yes. Go ahead, give Lord, me damage. I'm just stuck on rolling 10s. Uh, and that is... Ooh, that's so many! That's two fives and a six. Ah, 17 yeah. damage. Wow. Of radiant damage. Okay. Yeah, you you see the guiding bolt just goes and slams into the side of this thing, and then it just starts circling around the body of this creature. Still kicking, though. Okay. Um, I'll say, uh, if anyone's going to hit it, hit it now! And that will be my turn. Okay. All right, we are back up to the top of the round with Echo. Can I quickly ask, what what does your guiding bolt do? You have advantage on the next hit. Yep, next attack has advantage. Does it have to be an attack? Yes. Okay. What are you What are you looking to do? Oh, I'm. Is it possible to run up to this thing and jump and ride it? So <laughs> I, you would have to make a grapple check, <laughs> which okay. is an attack roll. Oh, it is? Oh. So you have, it you have, likes it. So you have to make an unarmed strike to try to grab, and then it's a contest to see if you can grab it. As a warning, folks, we're about to have a zombie raptor shifter in our, in our midst. So. <laughs> <laughs> a zombie just, raptor like, shifter. I'm too enamored by this creature. It's it's both terrifying and really pretty at the same time. We so. need to take this pretty girl to a zoo. bleeding. <laughs> like pieces of right. flesh. So, so, all right. So what I'm going to run next? run up to it, and I'm going to try and attempt to grapple. Is that what you're saying would work for? Yeah, so go ahead. Give so me an unarmed strike. strike. Yep. Attack With roll. advantage? With advantage. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's, let's do this. <laughs> the <bonkers. laughs> 22. 22. Okay, so you're able to grab hold of it. Now I need you to do a um, athletics check or acrobatics uh, contested against his strength. I, I'm doing acrobatics. Okay. Oh, that's that's a natural one. And oh. I got a natural twenty. <laughs> <laughs> so, you all see Echo just come running Careful. up, jumps onto the back <laughs> of this undead unicorn, and gets flung off. Oh no! So you, as you come up, you land ten feet beyond this unicorn. And you are prone. I want, I don't know I want to let it be known that when Echo jumped towards the unicorn, I got out of like my battle stance. I was just watching in curiosity to see what would happen next. <laughs> <laughs> and when and she's you were flung going from this to like, oh. yeah, like I, like I, I never let my whip drop, but I was just like. <laughs> okay. I stood up straight. That was, that was Let's a, see. Hmm. So you had that was five, ten, fifteen. So you only went about fifteen feet to get to it. So you do still have half your movement left. <laughs> if you want to stand back up, that'll be about it. Yeah, I'll stand back up. Like okay, okay. No one else try that. <laughs> Why would you try you that? Right? What are you doing? <laughs> so you all just saw. Echo comes, jumps on, landed on the back side of this unit, and it just kicked his butt up, and uh, you just see Echo fly off. Oh no, this is full, this is full amateur on the mechanical bull, sort yes. of like fooling away, <laughs> sort of thing. It, that, that's pretty much I wish exactly you could have you asked for animal handling or something, but I guess not. No, you're in combat, you're trying to grapple this thing. Okay, okay. so yeah. next up is the unicorn. The unicorn looks over at you, Ro standing right there in front of it. And you see the horn just go get brighter and brighter as it swings its horn at you. Um, oh God, what did you do? 
So I just rolled a natural 20. Again. You keep rolling natural 20s. No. Stop it. <laughs> um, so as it hits you, you feel this dark energy from the horn just go into your Hold body. Hold on. Yes. There we go. I, I, uh, I'm gonna impo- I'm gonna impose it. I'm gonna have uh, um, the the dog uh, actually impose disadvantage on the creature. He can intercede when a, when a creature is being attacked, so he okay. can for- he can force it to 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 roll a, an additional dice. Okay, so that's uh, your reaction to do yeah, that. Yeah, it's it, it's his reaction. It actually gets the reaction deflect attack, so it imposes the it imposes a disadvantage on the roll of the creature. As long okay. as it's within five feet. So as it goes right. to, to hit row, it's going to impose disadvantage. Okay, so let's see. Leadership and tech. So that is going to be a 16 to hit. It hits. Better but it doesn't crit. hit as bad. So no, so it's not a crit. <laughs> <laughs> but it still hits. Thank so you, still, Biscuit. As the horn hits you, you just feel the surge of energy, almost as if your life force is being drained from you. And you take ten points of necrotic damage. Oh, that hurts. Ooh. Ooh, God. Okay. And then it goes ahead, rears up, and it tries to kick Biscuit. Uh, for a fourteen to hit. Uh, let's see. That does hit his armor class. No, fourteen. Yeah, fourteen. No, does not hit his armor class does not hit him. Okay, so Biscuit just kind of gets out of the way as the a hoof comes down, trying to step on the back of Biscuit. Biscuit's a bit right. tougher now. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right, Ro, you are up, followed by okay. Taryn. Um, so uh, I'm going to kind of just like, like take a second. Like that really just like it like it hit. Um, and so, uh, I'm kind of like shaken up and like, you can, you can see it. Like there's just like a little bit of panic in Rose face. And, and usually when she like, you know, is actively fighting, that doesn't happen. <laughs> and so like, she, she feels it like, it's just like, kind of like, like icy. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and attack with my rapier. Okay. Um, and I'm also going to use Booming Blade. Okay. Um, <laughs> so... Wait a minute, it's not room. <laughs> nope, you can't. Um, the so come. first for this, um, that's a 21 to hit. 21's gonna hit. Um, and then I roll the damage for the rapier first, correct? Yes, yep. Okay. So, oh my God, my heart's beating so fast. <laughs> um, so that's a that's twelve damage for the rapier. Okay. Um, and then, uh, so now the effects of blooming blade. Okay, so it is under the effect of blooming blade as you see this kind of almost electrical energy kind of going around this creature, um, but. I would like you to go ahead and narrate for us how you just killed this thing. <laughs> nice. Um, well, I guess Booming Blade wouldn't have had an effect, but <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I just like, like, just like freeze for a moment, and and just like you know, just like like gather all of my energy, and and you guys just kind of like like there's just like a crackling sense of energy, and just like. Like as the thing, you know, reared back to kick Biscuit, just like shove the rapier like right under a like a foreleg. Okay. Yeah, and you just you just see it as you as you make that. So it just it collapses down to the ground. I've been taking my, taking my eyes off of Bro since you know the booming blade. <laughs> would would it have been noticeable if yeah? The didn't because you it? you have to use your bonus action to cast the spell. Mm-hmm. So, it, I mean, that's got your verbal, your semantic components and all that. Uh, okay, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yep. Okay, so as this creature now lays before you on the ground, everybody go ahead and give me another constitution saving throw, please. Wait, this is the first. My hands are shaking. <laughs> Non-natural 20. 
Okay. Mm. Ten. Um, Ten. All right. And eleven. Mm. Eleven. Okay. Mm. Three. Three. <laughs> Hmm. Taryn? I I also uh received a three. <laughs> okay. As a matter of fact, I too received old, a three. old man club, baby. It's a cool so, 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 the, so the elves are down. So <laughs> nope. So as you see this creature fall and you feel that combat has ended, you all go to take a deep breath to try to help calm yourself. Steel, you're okay at burns. But you're still doing okay. Everyone else, you just start coughing. How serious you're coughing even more. And as you're coughing, you almost you kind of touch your lips, and there's a little bit of blood now on your hand. As you all take another point of exhaustion. All of except us? for no, for all of you, take one point of exhaustion. How serious takes on one second. point of exhaustion. Steel, you are okay. How do I? Yay! Yeah, how do you do that on here? It's oh, uh, go next to the armor class. There you go. Yeah. I go. I go to. I go to roll. I said, "How? How did you?" <coughs> and then just fall to my uh, knee. One knee. Ooh. How's it? How's everybody looking as far as as far as damage goes? Well, my lungs hurt. Pretty Your lungs. Lungs. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, looking around, I mean, you don't see any injuries on Ro, but you can tell that she just looks pale right now. Uh, okay. Taryn, how Harris, you guys get out of here. I'm gonna look at Cafe, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, point to to Ro, and he's gonna run over, and he's gonna fly over to you and drop down on your shoulder, and just you all of a sudden get psh, this like healing aura coming through. You get. Uh, let's see, six plus. Well, so as you do that, nine you points see, of healing. You feel the magical energy go through Cafe, and Ro, as you feel that start to try to go into you, it it doesn't take. Ah, hmm. uh. as if something with that strike that you took from that horn is preventing you from regaining any hit points at the moment. So, uh, I don't want to be a zombie. Can I, can I pull the unicorn head off? <laughs> you want to pull the whole head off? Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how do you? I don't have any time to. I'm I'm coughing. I don't, we don't have any time to uh, to be intricate about it. So I'm gonna just okay. try to. Give, it's a zombie. I don't know. Kick it in the vertebrae and try to get the head off. Give me an athletics check. Give me athletics at disadvantage. Have a blade. Mm. I th- it's a zombie. I thought it would just come off. It's bones. I don't know. <laughs> it has skin. Athletic. Not much. Biscuit just bit like half of it off. Athletics at a negative one at disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the dice, baby. The dice are not. Less than a five. Yeah, no, you're you're trying to pull at it, and it's just it's not budging. Karen, <laughs> just just get out of here. Uh, but uh, hold up, I'm gonna uh, hand me that long sword. I'm stubbornly trying to pull it off. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna take his long sword out of its sheath and shove him. <laughs> not even. <laughs> do, you, do you have a long sword or is it a short sword? Or short sword, whatever it is. Okay, yeah, short swords. I'm gonna unsheath. You took my short sword. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? <laughs> and I'm, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take the horn off. I'm just gonna slice the horn straight off of it. Okay. Um, yeah. Give me. The head. Give me a survival. I could have did that. <laughs> uh, Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Yeah, you're able to kind of cleave off part of the forehead, and you've got the kind of top portion of the bone. And the horn coming off of it. Now go, <laughs> and I'm giving, and I toss the sword back. Okay, so catch a sword. As, Can I get a st- <laughs> Excuse um, me. As you reach, as you reach to touch the horn, I need you to go ahead and give me a Constitution saving throw, please. 
I do these in my sleep. Uh, let's see. Don't say those things. Not, not natural 20. <laughs> okay. So as you do that, you feel a necrotic energy try to kind of suck some of your life force out, but you're able to kind of hold it off. Like Zora within my... I, uh, I wrap it in, uh, some of the leftover, uh, like, oh, what, what, no, what, I don't have that anymore. I'm just going to wrap it up in some, like, uh, some, like a cloak, like, like, okay. just, so, so my travel gear, I'm just going to take it out and wrap it up. Okay. So you, you wrap it up and you're going to tuck it away. What are the rest of y'all doing? Run I'm, out. Trying to get some teeth. I'm going to come up uh, behind Ro and uh, put a hand on her shoulder. Say, yeah, "Good job, battle tactics. Very, very no." <laughs> and just fall to the ground because uh, right now I am moving at half speed. Yep. Um. So I am just yeah. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna crouch down and like pull pull your arm over and just kind of like all right, come on. I don't I'm just gonna, I'm not moving at half speed, but I'm slowly walking over, having been knocked back so far. <laughs> like, <laughs> still trying to regain composure. Just pretty embarrassed about what I tried to do. Nobody say a word, just. <laughs> I didn't know this was gonna be a rodeo. It was my first. <laughs> yep. No, I've, tried, was... I've tried it with poplets. I thought it would, they're not the same species. It was my mistake, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the exposed bone might have been a giveaway that I, I don't know. It might. It... <laughs> okay. Now, Sarah, right. get oh, out of right. here. What are you doing? What? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm gonna start kind of like stumping out of there with Hal Saris. Okay. All right. Oh, the old man's dying. So it it takes you all probably about 20 minutes or so, because with how slow Hal Saris is kind of moving right now to get the quarter to a half a mile towards the edge of the Mornlands. And you proceed out through the dark gray mist once again. Uh, before we do that, I'm just going to kind of look, like, turn away and look at it, kind of just, uh, just think to I myself, grab wow. the kid. <laughs> Sorry? Okay. I grabbed the kid. No, 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 we're not, we're not going through this again. I have, I have one of the dad. You got to grab her. Do you think we'll come back again? Oh, we're not. No. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I have a feeling we will. Um, nope, before you, we you, you promise. Don't put that out in the universe. Nope. <laughs> come on, let's get out of here. Too, before we get too far from the ship, um, can I look over my shoulder out into the mist? Do I see any remnant of that thing walking out there? You do. Out? I'm going to, like, through hacks and, like, blood, I'm going to, like, wave my hand at steel and point at it. We all look at his pointing. Yep, so you all look out there and you see, and so Ro and Halceris, you do notice that it does seem to be getting closer. But you all see a silhouette through the mist of a creature larger than anything you have seen before. About three, four hundred feet tall. Just slowly lumbering. Have I have I seen what it before? What is it shaped like? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like... hard to tell. You just you just see a large, almost like shadow in the mist. Does it make? Does it give me any flashbacks to things that have happened very recently? <laughs> I no. Get no, it doesn't. No, but you like can go ahead and give enough. me a history check. Okay. Can I can I try as well? Sure. Uh, I... Let's see history. Uh, and actually, steal. I will give you advantage on that as well. Cool. Would I get any? Would I get 22. any flashes? You know, from a. You got an eight. Eight twenty-two. Would I get any flashes from 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 my uh, uh, ancestral patron? Anything of the sort? Um, like... no. So this is much larger than anything that you would have seen with that. So steel, as you're you're kind of looking at it, you do remember that there were House Caneth was 
creating towards the end of the war giant goliaths they were warforged goliaths that were rumored to be about three or four hundred feet tall that so was bigger, bigger than the one that we saw in the in the so ship. it is not no so this is much much larger the one that you saw on the ship is probably stands at about 12 feet tall this one is <sighs> hundreds oh man not good. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna walk up to Halsaris and be like, "Come on, we can. Uh, let's pick up the pace and help help Ro carry Halsaris out." Okay. All right. So you all, Echo, are you gonna turn around and depart with the rest of them? Yeah. I'll just be like, I already grabbed Echo. No, I'll, <laughs> I'll see you again soon. As I wave to the okay. to the I'm land. Risk her running back into the mists again. So as you all walk back through the edge of the stark gray mist, you come out on the other side. The sun is getting ready to set, and you all just inhale just the, some of the freshest air you've had throughout this day. <coughs> as you all kind of cough a little bit. You all right, old man? Or are you Dust. going old? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one with the gray hair. That's fair. I'll be fine. I just... I just need some rest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alceris, I, 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 I got a pipe that might help with that. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> Yeah, with the chokes, it's good. I would laugh more if it was if my lungs didn't burn. Also, if it was funnier. <laughs> I would laugh more if it was funnier. <laughs> all right, what do you all plan on doing? Where's the camp that we started to set up? Yeah, so it's about 120 watch. feet out from where you're at. We're heading We're there. We're not dumping that direction. And I, uh, yeah. I, I make a mental uh, note to... Uh, Cafe, uh, stay back and kind of wa- just keep an eye out for us. Watch our backs, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's your raven noise. <laughs> uh, <that's> amazing. <laughs> Cafe only can sound like that from now on. Yeah, I don't Damn know him. if I could do it again. <laughs> Cafe just sounds like a recording in yeah. uh, rewinding. rewinding <laughs> it. I messed okay. I messed up the vocal cords when I was doing the incantation. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you get back to the campsite that you all had started, you notice that you still got your cooking supplies and your water skin are still sitting there, steel. Uh huh. And yeah, you all proceed to. Set up camp for the evening. I'm gonna. I sit echo down. I sit t- echo down forcibly, and I say, "You stay." <laughs> <laughs> I was just can can I can I echo. go steal? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I walk away. <laughs> okay, All I'm right, gonna. Just... I'm, I'm gonna. Uh, cast an alarm spell around us. Okay. Um, audible, very loud to everybody. Okay. And I'm going to make a tinker check with our Dudrix cube. Oh, okay. Go ahead and give me a tinker's check. Um, and what is my... Uh, is that just int? It's int, right? Intelligence plus your proficiency, because I think you're proficient with Tinker's tools, right? Yes, yes, and I have mine yep. handy. Uh, so, let's see. That would be a 24. 24. As you start to tinker with it, you just about get it. And it, you, it just, everything goes right back into place. You are right there on the cusp of getting it. I, I I would have to roll a natural twenty to do better. So, this thing is a hard this thing is a hard nut to crack. Mm-hmm. Um, but, so through. you do know though after after time the more 
if you are successful with it, it'll start getting easier and easier as you go. And you're more likely to be able to utilize this item as you go. Um, I will, uh, if it's not too much trouble, I'll have uh, Ro help me down uh, near the campfire. And uh, <clears throat> thank you. It is uh, much better out in the fresh air. Um, you mind if I take a look at that? And I'll point to the stab wound from the unicorn. So there's no actual stab wound. Oh, okay. So it's just the horn just came down and touched you. And you felt the energy just kind of start coursing through you. I don't, I don't think there's anything there. I just, I don't, it doesn't, something feels like I don't feel right. I, I walk by, said, there's something right there. And I point to just, her shoulder. I don't look down. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you do see like that whole side of her face and the shoulder are just very pale right now. Um, can I make a form of check, uh, medicine or arcana or something to see if I might know what this is? Uh, give me, yeah, I'll let you do medicine or arcana. Sam, what side is that? Is it right or left? It'll be your left side. Okay. And, uh, if I see him checking that out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab the horn out and say, uh, Alcaris, maybe this will help. And I, I roll it out. Don't touch. Um, it's still pretty powerful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help him. I'm gonna give him an uh, advantage. Okay. I'm going to guide myself. Um, so now it's just a straight. So roll. So now it's just a straight roll. Yep. Perfect. Um, let's go with medicine. That's better than the other. Um, that is one quick second. Uh, seventeen. Okay. So with the seventeen, in your studies to be a vassal. You have helped with some injured and stuff like that. And you do know that there are some spells out there that do tend to prevent healing for a short period of time. Um, but you kind of looking at it, you feel like maybe after a certain period of time, she'll start getting back to normal. You do see some of the colors starting to come back as you're checking sure. it out. Um, I have good news and I have bad news. Uh, bad news is uh, that this is a lingering sort of ailment uh, that happens with certain magical creatures. Uh, good news, it is not permanent. Uh, hopefully, it should uh, alleviate itself. Uh, hope Maybe a good night's sleep, maybe a two, um, but hopefully you will be right as rain eventually. Thanks. Thank you. Rose got a lingering ailment. <laughs> all right so as you all prepare your camp and you prepare to settle down for the evening this is going to be a good spot for us to go ahead and take a short break we're going to go take about five minutes refresh our waters uh, get ready for what's going to happen in the second half of tonight's show so um don't forget, though, while we're on break, if you do have any questions for any of the cast right now, you can go ahead and type QUESTION in all caps. And when we come back from the break, we're going to go ahead and answer about two or three questions uh, before we get back into the action. No, previously we've talked about philosophy and practical questions. Let's get into current events. Yesterday, Richard Branson traveled to the edge of space. And yet, I want to ask all of you, have you traveled over to the Games Tavern Patreon yet? After all, it's the best way to support the cast and crew of the show. It now features some awesome stuff from D Dirty Deeds, and it'll continue to be updated every week with new content for pa patrons. Latest updates also include early access to the interviews from the Games Tavern Happy Hours, miniature paint plans from That Mini's Paint Show, and battle maps and plug-in encounters for your games. So just go on over to the Games Tavern on Patreon, and it's just the games tavern, all one word, and you'll get hands on this amazing content. Uh, just a reminder to anyone, uh, when you cheer 500 bits, uh, we will award random inspiration. If you cheer 1,000 bits, you can choose which character gets them. If you think that one character might need a little more than the other, like an ailing senior citizen player <laughs> that is <laughs> choking on his own blood, if you think so, it is up to you. Damn. And we are also currently doing a giveaway. So type 
uh, exclamation point epic in the Twitch chat to enter to win an epic character generator to create realistic avatars of your characters from overhead games. And we'll be right back in just a few minutes. Hi, it's me, Scalithrax. When I'm not rampaging the world and trying to destroy everything in sight, I'm rampaging for new 5th edition monsters for my dungeons. And whether you need scuttling dungeon denizens, alien horrors, or sentient avatars of the world tree, the Creature Codex has you covered. Nearly 400 new foes for your 5th edition game. Everything from acid ants and grave behemoths to void giants and zombie lords. 424 pages of monsters. They include a dozen new demons and five new angels, wasteland dragons and dinosaurs, all new golems which include the altar flame golem, the doom golem, and keg golem. <laughs> Who doesn't want a few extra keg golems around their dungeon party? There's also elemental lords and animal lords to challenge powerful parties, chieftains and other leaders for rat folk, centaurs, goblins, trollkin, and much more. New undead including a hierophant lich to menace lower level characters, and so much more. Use them in your favorite published setting, or populate the dungeons of your 5e world of your own creation. Pick up a Creature Codex from koboldpress.com today and surprise your players with monsters they won't be expecting. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching the show. It looks like you're having a great time. Let me tell you really quick about That Minnie's Paint Show. Every Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Every show, the host and their guests will be painting miniatures live on stream. They'll walk you through all the different techniques and products they use to paint miniatures to a high standard in a quick and easy fashion. They'll show you all the different things live. And on top of that, the audience gets to ask questions and we're gonna answer them live on stream. If you've always wanted to learn how to paint miniatures, this is a great way to do so. And on top of that, you can paint while you're painting with us too and chat with us and tell us about your projects and share your pictures of your miniatures as well. We love it when people share their miniatures with us. So remember, That Minis Paint Show, every Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 p.m. Pacific, only on the Games Tavern Network.
All right, everybody, uh, welcome back. So we uh, all got our refreshed our waters, took a little break, and we're ready to go ahead and get back into it here as our adventurers have just departed from the Mornlands and are currently setting up camp right outside where they intended to sleep the day prior. <laughs> or no, because you didn't, sp no, they planned to sleep earlier this day. What is so sleep? <laughs> so. Uh, what are y'all doing as you pre finish preparing for the evening? Um, I'm just laying I'm like definitely a feeling a little bit like just thrown off from not only the attack but also the my own shady nonsense. Um, and so I think I'm probably just you know kind of like helping set up, but like kind of like doing it absentmindedly and like like I have this like you know like a burning ish and so I just you know like there's like a compulsive like hand rub happening but mostly just existing mm -hmm. okay so uh DM you said so the so the blooming blade it was it was obvious that she did something right yes yeah so during the attack you you saw her kind of brandish the rapier and you saw like Look like some magical energy kind of going through the blade as she struck. Mm -hmm. That's not something that we know to be akin to Ro and or fighters, right? This is the first time any of you have seen Ro do this. Okay. Uh, Ro, as I lay on a log half-heartedly and still did possibly we food, by the way bit. just randomly did we eat food no no <laughs> yeah. we're, 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 said no we're gonna make that right about now actually okay i'm gonna i'm gonna follow steel <laughs> as echo runs runs by is a no, no more running away I, I i mean steel i i know i kind of ran away earlier would you mind still having me as your helping hand <laughs> no it's <laughs> it's fine Besides, I got one extra hand uh, keeping an eye on you now. And I, I look over a biscuit. Right. <laughs> and I look. I look Hi, over biscuit. <laughs> Remember when I saved you? <laughs> yeah. <And> biscuits <laughs> just. You you see the mechanical biscuit now, just kind of sitting there staring at you. Cool. <laughs> I love being monitored. It's nice. <laughs> uh, I look. I look at Rosa. Ah. Uh, so what? Was that? What was that? None of the shadiness. Come on. That's awesome. Um, sometimes, mm -hmm. when sometimes. Uh, when uh, when things feel a little out of my control, mm -hmm. th things happen. Rubbish. I inside check on Ro. I mean, she's Ro she's is not, clearly hiding something. Like, that like, no... she she's not even hiding that she's. I'm not even hiding that I'm hiding something. Yeah, it's, she it's is beating around the bush. Catchphrase is inside check on Ro. Hashtag. We're gonna market that. So I, <laughs> I look at Hell Saris and said, ah. Uh, one of the kids are hiding something. All right, look, I'm just saying, I don't know how I got to this place where I can do these things. I will say what I witnessed was excellent battle tactics and good use of maneuvers. Whatever else may have happened, I know not, but I know that it saved lives. Uh, so shady is not withstanding. Um, also, I don't believe people skulking in shadow should throw stones at uh, other people's shaded houses. <laughs> shaded. <laughs> <sighs> This point of order, this whole time I'm just laying on a log. Uh, I'm I'm just shifting my head different different uh directions. Trying to avoid the shade. 
No, no, I'm not trying to avoid this shit. Just, just turn into people I'm talking to. I'm just laying on a log without much effort of like sitting up or moving. So I, I, I look down at her and says, um, well, um, you know that I'm shady. She's just shady, shady. I, I, you so, know what I, you know so, what I've done. You know what I, you know where I were, where I was, where I've been. And I narrow my eyes and look. It's <laughs> like I said, laying down and narrow my eyes and look at Ro. You know where I've been. You know what I've done. But what all do we know about all the little fights out there? I know that she has risked her life to save me. No, well, I, I Paul Ferris, he's right. I, I it's, it's 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 been it's been a couple years at this point. He's you're not gonna sell me out, are you? Maybe. And uh she's gonna take her glove off. <gasps> are we Strong all there to hand. see this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, so you see kind of a, like, just like, a, like across the back of her hand and like a little bit up her wrist. It's just like, it's like, I mean, it's an aberrant dragon mark and it's like, it's like whorls of skin and like, it almost looks kind of like a burn, but, but it's, it's recognizable for what it is. Hmm. Uh, this is not what I expected. I looked at how serious this is, uh... Seems like we've got an aberrant on our hands. I roll off the log. <laughs> Splat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would make a move over and uh, do you mind if I examine? And, uh, I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to thoroughly examine it. Um, to you, DM, I have I've known about dragon marks before. Right. Um, would I have experience with aberrant dragon marks? So you 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 have done some research on them with, um, in part of your past, and you know that no two aberrant dragon marks look the same, and they manifest sometimes at birth, sometimes during high moments of stress, and it affects anyone, any race may end up with one of these at some point if you uh have you always been uh, marked like this uh it was uh well a couple years ago so uh, in a in a bit of a it was my my first real uh pickle and uh it saved my life it's not unheard of. Uh, aberrant dragon marks, um, they, uh, they are almost a seed of chaos. They appear randomly in stress, in uh, near death. They are, uh, see, uh, they are of the, of the dragon above himself. It is impossible to say what they might be. Um, thank you for sharing this with us. I try to uh, touch her. I touch her hand with my, uh, like I take, <laughs> I, I take off my, uh, my, 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 my sacred necklace, my druidic focus. And I, and I touch it to her, to her hand, to the dragon mark while she's talking to her to see what happens. Nothing happens. <laughs> so just as we're having this conversation, just a necklace drops down on my hand. It's like, <laughs> I don't even drop doing? it. I'm, I'm, I'm holding. I'm holding it. And I'm just slowly lowering it. It just in 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 a camera shot. It just appeared. And just slowly, and I just touch it. So, well, uh, that didn't have the reaction I thought it would. What did you what think did was you going think? to happen? What? Uh, magic and magic. I don't know things. Uh, so you were just gonna see happen. if something happened? Yeah, science. That so, uh, is not science. That a hundred percent is no science. <laughs> you do things and you see uh you see what happens. You try some just... experiments and whatnot. Well, uh, all right. 
Carry on. Sa- satisfied? For now. So she, I'm gonna put the glove back on and just like, like try and try not to naturally get defensive about things because <laughs> we have personality flaws. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I will look at Taryn and then back at you, Ro, and say, um, you have shared this with us. Um, I will not speak of this to anyone, um, but whether or not you share this with Echo and Steel um, is entirely your prerogative. This is not my secret to share. No, I... So y- y'all are close enough to Roll where everybody was kind of part oh, of this. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, I, yeah, I, you guys yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, right when she's about to share our lab, to know we're there, I guess. Yeah. No, I, so, I look up okay. to it, and I look up to Roy and say, well, because now after, after I try to touch the... Uh, try to create some sort of magical something, I just sat down, like, next to where they are, where they were, and I look up to uh, Ro and I say, well, I'd sell you, but, uh, I don't think the others would. <laughs> I don't think the others would uh, appreciate it that much. So, I mean, Tyrion, you're gonna have to go through me if you saw her. Uh, I mean, you understand right. that the Boromars would take you as well. We are all under bounty. I had never mentioned the Boromar. Ooh, who, hmm. Hmm? Who, Inside who, check on rope. <laughs> No, I, I just. So, who are you selling me to? Out of out of not idle, to anyone idle curiosity, and she's like, I'm like getting kind of mad. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just wondering. Uh, 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 who you'd sell me to if I weren't gonna stab you in the back at night? I don't know. Anyone who wants to do away with an aberrant. Dragon mark have a no oh, I, I I'm just gonna just gonna get up and just like I, and like like stomp off go over like steel's probably like a little bit in like just like just like a few feet away right just gonna yeah. stomp off over there and kind of like 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 kind of like try and help get in the way you're not gonna sell me are you <laughs> I mean not 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 unless you you burn my food no, no one's gonna sell you stop <laughs> stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tyrion, you do remember that you have already met somebody that's trying to inquire about aberrant dragon marks. <laughs> well, that's someone. The Lyra. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, like, uh, I'm sorry. Nah. So, and uh, I'll sell you, but not to her. <laughs> no, I don't like her. She, okay. She's shady. She's... <laughs> She's more shady than we are combined. <laughs> I'm saying something. <clears throat> All right. So, Steel, you are making some food, right? Yeah. Uh, nothing fancy. Just making more rice. Because uh, we've been through some, some stuff lately. I'm not getting fancy. Okay. Go ahead. So, give me a survival. All right. Oh, since I've been helping him, does he have advantage? Yes. Yep. Natural 20. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's some good ass rice. Uh, yeah. So this came, this rice came out really good. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, DM, but this probably tastes so good, it probably alleviates some exhaustion, right? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> no. No. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> but you have a good enough. But it's, right. very soft, it's very soft and soothing on the throat. Yeah, yeah. So your 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 throat doesn't quite feel as scratchy, but you still got that heavy feeling in your lungs. Nope. Yeah, it's in there. (laughs) Yeah. Now, Saris, uh, uh, you need some some tea, some uh, some herbal remedy. Uh, No, it is fine. Uh, I I will be fine. Do not worry. Uh, Just some just some extra shut eye. I think. Okay. It really takes it out of you. I mean, it was hard to breathe. Sure, but. It wasn't too bad. So I mean, may, go go past your first century and then and then tell me how it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you tell him. You, you tell him how serious. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to see you survive in a tribe. It'd be real fun. I promise. <laughs> Probably. 
Fair enough. That's a good spicy. <laughs> Love right. to see it. So, and, and as you all... go back already. <laughs> as you I'm all sit I just, de- I just deadpan stare. Just. <laughs> did, did I say that out loud? <laughs> Alright, as you all sit around eating this delicious rice, the plain rice, having <laughs> the banter back and forth, the evening comes upon you. And you all prepare to lay down for the evening. Who do you plan on having take the first watch? I am going to let my homunculus and guard dog, who cannot be surprised, uh, take those roles for me. So, uh, okay. you guys enjoy whatever, but, uh, we've got a alarm bell up, um, a homunculus flying circles around us and a guard dog who physically cannot sleep and cannot be surprised. I'm going to get some shut eye. Uh, truly yeah. a twilight of existence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So does anyone plan on taking watch other than biscuit and cafe well i'll be awake in four hours uh i guess regardless so my eyeballs can only do so much oh right hold on hold on hold on hold on and i'm gonna i'm gonna give you i'm gonna make you another flashlight (laughs) (laughs) all right right. i i can watch anyone want me to watch knock yourself out Okay, so you have the first watch row. Go ahead and give me a perception check at disadvantage. This time, though, oh. this time I'm, I'm using I'm using one of the one of the leftover stirring spoons as a flashlight. <laughs> really quick, really quick. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna, I wanna in my in my spot that I am that I'm in my trance. I wanna set like twigs and crunchy stuff around me in a perimeter. I got okay. a six. Six. Okay. So, your couple hours with, go by uh, with with advantage from the help that she's getting from uh, the homunculus. So actually, yes, yeah, so it would actually be a straight roll. So go ahead, re-roll, just a straight roll. Thirteen. Okay. So with that, a couple <laughs> hours go by. You swear you keep hearing that same voice of your uncle every once in a while as you're sitting mm-hmm. there. At some point, I'm gonna I'm gonna get up and start pacing because it's it's gonna it's it, it just it makes me like it makes my skin like it makes my blood boil, um, and so I'm gonna like be pacing and occasionally just out of spite I'll go and stand on one of the twigs next to Taryn. Okay. <laughs> so Taryn, you hear you hear one of those twigs kind of snaps you out of your trance real quick. When I opens when I opens or. And I shine a light into it. How is my tra- How is my trance? Is it is it both eyes open? Or is it? And when I open, when I, I make I, eye I, contact, I meditation, and then I stamp on another twig with the flashlight in his eye. Ah! Tell me, you piece. Of- <laughs> yeah, yeah. You keep this up. I might have to sell you for real. Can't buy another twig and walk away. <laughs> throw a okay. twig at her. <laughs> All right, you just feel this twig kind of bounce off your back. Whatever. Uh, no, All right. seven, seven, Who yeah. do you plan on waking up for the next watch? <laughs> um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go to steel. Okay. <laughs> kind of, okay. you know, just a little bit of a nudge. Yeah, you're up. All right. Um, hey, uh, hey, biscuit. Uh, go make a couple rounds, and then uh, let's leave House Harris alone, because you know, I think yeah. I, I think I think every, I think we'll start having people getting up after that anyway. So okay, okay. All right. All right. So go ahead, give me a perception with advantage for. <clears throat> All right. That is an 18. 
Okay. Do you have any kind of, is there a telepathic link between you and your steel defender? Uh, no. Uh, let me see. No, it's not telepathic, but he can understand okay. my speech and, um, he can bark fairly loudly. Okay. So you, about an hour into your, uh, your watch, you see biscuit kind of go over towards the camp on the side of where the dark gray mist is and he just kind of sits down staring into the mist and you kind of hear a mechanical like almost like he's whimpering away and is the ear the one mechanical ear and the one like actual dog ear that's still there are both kind of pointed towards the mist Um, does, do I get anything from, uh, from cafe? Does he see, cause he can get 120 feet out for me. Right. So he, you're not really getting anything from cafe. Cafe is not seeing anything. Okay. Well, if they get close enough to set off the alarm, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be fine. Okay. What's the radius on the alarm? Uh, alarm spell. <clears throat> 20 foot cube yeah 20 foot cube um until the spend spell ends so okay. uh, yeah they'll know and obviously if anything gets close enough to try to harm us we'll be good okay all right so your couple hours come to an end do you plan on waking anybody else up how long has it been so it's been for you it's been you've got your four hour trance in so you would be coming too Again, I'll send, I'll send, uh, uh, steel or uh, I'll send, uh, uh, biscuit out, um, to go, uh, go check in on, on Taryn. Okay. Let's see if Taryn's awake. He can, he can keep an eye out for us for a little while. All right. So Taryn, you have completed your long rest. Needed that. So, yep. So you also lose your point of exhaustion because you did eat before you went to sleep. I mean, you will need to eat something else this morning, but so go ahead, give me what we'll do for the next four hours while everybody else finishes their rest. Go ahead, give me a perception check with advantage. Clickety clackety. <laughs> Woo. Uh, that is an 18, eight, yeah, 18, 18. Okay. Um, those four hours go by, you're just kind of looking around and you, you see that the clouds that have been kind of going overhead seem to be clearing up. Looking it's like it, so it's just looking like you might have a nice couple of days coming up. Oh, nice. Uh, during the four hours I surround, uh, row. Rose sleeping bag or whatever she's sleeping where she's at with twigs and whatever else I can find. Okay. Just walk. I'm just walking around camp, just keeping an eye out, and just every time I find like more twigs or something, just walk by and just drop them by and just surround her her sleeping bag with them. Okay. Okay. All right. So t- the evening passes, coming to the morning, you all start coming to you all get your long rest so you all lose one point of exhaustion how serious you still have one left however oh thank you for reminding me it's so good (laughs) that is my that is part of my job here it is i appreciate it (laughs) bro as you wake up you go to roll over to start getting up and you just you hear all these twigs crunching beneath you (laughs) And um, yeah, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stand like, and it's just like crunch, crunch, crunch. And I'm just gonna look at Taryn and I'm gonna be like, well met. I do a shimmy and flourish my cape, uh, my uh, cloak and walk away. <laughs> a shimmy. All right. I added a shimmy to the flourish. So oh the gosh. morning is now yours. Your you wish to right there. <laughs> What do you all wish to do in the morning this morning? Let's get out of here. 
breakfast, and then and then let's let's get. Actually, no wait. Everybody okay with uh, trail rations this morning, or we need to go? Absolutely. Yeah. Can we just do breakfast to go? Sure, sure, sure. Hi. All right, cafe. Get us some coffee, and then let's be out of here. <laughs> cafe. Coffee. Okay. So cafe <laughs> brews you up a little bit of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> As he comes and eats a little the coffee beans out of your hand, <laughs> you all get a little bit of coffee, and you all make your way where? Home. Home, home yeah. on the range. Okay, so you Quick. start heading back. Let's let's towards... let's try to double time it too. Yeah, okay. like fast. So cross country you're going, pace. You're going at a faster pace, okay? So as you proceed on. You travel for your first day actually goes by fairly uneventful. You come up to another evening. You do you plan on stopping after your eight hours of travel? Or do you want to keep pushing forward? No, I think there is uh, eight hours of travel. Yeah. Hold on. I don't think there is there is not the exact purpose for us to be back so quickly. Uh, we are not rushing for something. So I think maybe we we can take it. We don't have to rush the whole time. So, okay. Am I alone in this? Say, if you no, guys I, think otherwise. Are we traveling for eight hours or for sixteen hours? Because we only need eight hours rest, right? Right. So after eight hours of travel, though, you will have to start making uh, con saves. Check con saves, or and if you fail those, you'll be taking points of exhaustion. I don't think it's, I don't, at least let, let how Sarah's come back to. No, yeah, yeah. We're not normal we're not old rush. man. Normal old man. <laughs> yeah. My poor arthritic bones. They're so weak. Oh <laughs> I mean, y'all are able to make some pretty good progress though. And you actually do see the grove that you all were in kind of in the distance. You just see smoke just billowing out from the middle of this grove. Um, does it appear to be black smoke or white smoke? It is black smoke. Oh, it's still burning. Holy shit. So there's something still burning in there. Perhaps the grove itself. You know what? Doesn't seem like an us problem. No, it's uh, fine. <laughs> it's a good thing at this point. All right. Okay. Well, we've got a, got a probably one more night's dinner if we uh, stretch it on that rice. Anybody anybody else need dinner or we get uh, save it for later? I will I have my own ration. That will be fine. I still got those 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 rations that I found in the kitchen, right? Like the fruits yep. and stuff? Yeah, a bunch of dried meat. I think we're good to go. So y'all, y'all feel that you're probably about three at the pace that you're taking. You're probably about three to four days, maybe, from New Seer. All right. So settle in. This would probably be great to have right now. Okay. So that evening, y'all rotate through your watches. It's a quiet night. The sky is clear. Moon, moon light is out. You don't. Your whole evening goes by with no issues. You don't see much wildlife because you're still kind of close to the moorlands, but you see the, the a lot of the vegetation is coming back as you, the further and further you go away from the dead gray mist. So the next morning, you all arise again to prepare yourself heading back towards New Seer once again. You, do you wish to keep the same pace as you go? Yes. yes. Okay, so y'all truck along. Um, how sirs, you now have all your points of exhaustion hey, recovered. Look like a spring chicken, I look is not bad. All right, maybe summer, spring. Mm -hmm. And so, as you proceed on your second day heading back, you do see a familiar sight off in the distance. You see a herd of elk. Not, it's not going we to happen. Oh, we're, on, yeah, we're, 
Oh, Let's sure, go. you can run to catch up, but we're gonna keep going. All right, all right. See you later. Okay, so you're running over towards the elf. Yep. Yep. All right. I will I, sneak towards the elf. Okay, yeah, I'm stealthily, I'm stealthily moving. Oh god! Oh god! I'm oh god! Yeah, I'm moving as stealthily as I can at like a normal pace. Like, um, I'm not crawling. before. Before, uh, like, if they kind of take off first and then Echo approaches a little more stealthily, before you get too far from me, I'm going to put a hand on your back and say, go get them. And I'm going to cast Enhance Ability on you. Ah, oh, cheater. Rude! <laughs> and and, and you, what does this enhancement do? Row is I that. shall give you the cat's grace. And now you have uh, advantage on dexterity checks. <laughs> also, you can't take fall damage from 20 feet. I wish I had that before. <laughs> yeah, no. No, if you told me riding the riding the giant okay. monster was a thing. Okay. So the so. three of you are are you approaching at normal pace or are you rushing towards them? I know Ro, you um, said you're going normal pace. Yeah, I'm also way. going. I'm going normal, normal pace. You, you, Terran, I'm a gloom stalker, man. I'm just I'm I'm, I'm stalking the gloom, man. And then the shadows, I'm going stealthily. Okay. I'm gonna and echo. Um, uh, is there something between normal and slow pace, like a sneaky sneak normal? Okay. I mean, if you're stealthing over there, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. World so, with advantage. No. Damage is a deck. I got advantage. Oh, wait, yeah, no, yeah, you do, yes, because of, yep, sorry. Okay. Nice ability. You get advantage, the rest of you. You have the two, go ahead and straight roll. What were you gonna do, Steel? I'm just gonna have uh, both of my my uh, uh, clockwork companions keep an eye on the other two. Okay. Fifteen. Fifteen. Twelve. Okay. Twelve. <laughs> Echo. Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So as, <laughs> as you all start heading towards these elk. You barely even make it halfway to them. They look up and just run off. Did you get a natural 20 or something? <laughs> Please. I got a 19. Wait, but come on. Come they they on. saw Taryn. Come on. Well, they didn't have to see me. No, they didn't see you. Okay, bye. <laughs> they stink. I had a plan this time. Ah. <laughs> I never Next, time, understand. Next time, let's not do it at the same time. Let's all take turns. I'm going to be completely honest. I didn't have a plan. It was just a blind hope. <laughs> and I've lost that hope. Okay. I'm going to get those out to love me. That was what You're I was going to do with the unicorn. No, that was different. Oh, that was an undead that was monster. Not. That's raw, very raw, raw. How do you so, know that undead don't have horns? You're going to either die or get us killed so uh, with that mentality so i think you need to i don't know stick to smaller li living animals like maybe a hedgehog be friends you with the you killed hedgehog. the hedge you killed the hedgehog the hedgehog no i dead. did not no i didn't no it's i did dead. not it's dead biscuit killed the hedgehog <laughs> yeah I it was just... actually biscuit that killed the hedgehog biscuit Canonical. may have killed it but you mutilated it it was already dead. It was a hedgehog. What did it do to you? Uh, its oh, name it's name would suggest hedgehog. that it was hogging the hedge, but uh, oh. I'm not sure. <laughs> Literally, it ends the argument immediately. We're all just like, kind of like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta love a good old dad you're, joke. You're, you're still exhausted, so your jokes aren't that no, great. No, now my lungs are fresh. I can get all these <laughs> jokes out. It's nice. It's good. Amazing. Okay, so the rest of your day tends to go seems to go by without incident. Um, you come to the evening. You plan on making another campsite? Yes, and I'm gonna say, Hal Saris, you look like you're feeling a lot better today. Damn. What say you give me a hand with this uh, this uh, puzzle box thingy? Uh, I'm sure. I'd be happy to. Uh, in fact, uh, let me give you uh, a little more than help. Um, and I'm going to <laughs> touch your forehead and uh, say a quick prayer. And I will give you enhance ability as well. Okay. Since so I imagine gonna... it's worn off. Uh, yeah. It was hours ago. 
So I shall give you the fox's cunning. So and that so is now you have advantage on all intelligence checks for the next hour. Okay. Sweet. Say a prayer too, would you? <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. Much better. Okay. Uh, that would be no. It's I got to roll a natural twenty for it to work. So never mind. Okay. It's an eighteen, but it's not not going to be enough. Eighteen, 18 okay. plus eighteen plus five, so so twenty two. Twenty three. Yep. So again, again, you you feel like you're getting it like right there, but just not quite working right now. Oh, nice try. Yeah. I mean, it's do you want to try to solve it at least? That's what I'm trying to do is solve it. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you were trying to tinker with it. There's two uh, different the, actions. Yeah, so the the Dudrix cube you have is what it does is if you when you solve it, there's a chance that it will go ahead and actually recharge. So you can use the ability of it. The tinker check is to actually help make that percentage that is going to recharge better. Okay, I want to just solve it. That's what I've been trying to do is just solve it. Okay, so I, I misunderstood you on that then. No, that's so cool. with the solving, it, you've gotten kind of used to this cube. You solve it, I need you to go ahead and give me a percentile die now. Um, 78. <laughs> so, yeah, so as, as you do it and you think you got it, it, you don't feel the energy within it grow. Gotcha. So with this item, you can do... Once per day, you can do a tinker check to try to improve your chances, as well as solve it and hope it and try to get it to recharge once per day. Okay, then I'll be doing both every day until this thing yep. is fi figured out. Okay. Yep. Um, if I could say something, I think um, when I give Echo that advantage and whatnot and to row, um, I think uh, Halceros has been a little bit strange to you, Ro, um, since your revelation. Um, uh, just a little bit, not distant, but um, yeah, just a little, not guarded, but just kind of keeping a little distance between us sort of thing. Do I see this? Do I notice this? Um, give me an insight. Insight on Hoseris. Yes. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, I have a 17. You, you know you do notice that there's a little bit of a kind of a standoffish kind of keeping his distance a little bit but it's just very subtle it's not outward i'm i'm assuming i would have yeah. felt it yeah yeah um, i lean over to row said looks like i'm not the one you have to worry about selling you <laughs> um i'm going to i'm going to kind of fall back and like like keep like a relative distance like just like not like get too in your face but is there something is it something i did or is what it just mean? i don't act like a sensitive person but it, it i i something is wrong and i would like to know if it was something that I did, and if not, if it is just the thing that is part of me, then so be it. Um, this is where we are making camp, right, Steel? Yeah, yeah, we can. This is the end of, end of day kind of settle down thing. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, Ro, take a walk with me. I'm going okay. to leave my leave my equipment here um, and just kind of take a walk. Is there a place like trees or anything where we'd be a little more private? In um, yeah, you see a couple trees with some bushes and stuff around where you're at. Um, yeah. So I would lead, and I will keep an eye because I see Terrence smiling. Um, so <laughs> I will keep an eye uh, on my surroundings to make sure I'm not being followed. Okay. But yeah, so I lead you. I lead you a probably sixty feet away, maybe eighty feet away, so it's not to be overheard. Um, 
and I will sit down and I will begin to uh, unclink uh, my armor. And I'll say, Ro, if I have been cold to you, um, please understand it is nothing against you uh, personally. I have not... Your revelation um, telling me something so personal, it feels like the the power balance might not be at a good place. So I'm going to share with you something that I am not ready to share with the others, but I feel you will know this. Um, and as I finish taking off uh, the last of my uh, chest plate, um, I will pull up the back of my shirt, and um, you see um, just scar tissue um, all over the back of my back, and it is not like from a weapon or anything. Uh, it is burn scars um, all up my back coming towards my neck. Um, just what looks like like second and third degree burns all around it. Um, and I will I apologize that it's not a pleasant thing to see. Um, but this is what I wish to show you. And I lift uh, the side and on my back um, you see partly etched in scar tissue um, is a dragon mark as well. Um, but not an aberrant dragon mark. Bro, go ahead, give me an arcana real quick. Young six. Okay, you do not recognize this mark. <clears throat> what, what, um, it's, it's been a long time since I was well versed from what house? My given name uh, is not uh, Halceris. Um, my given name is Solaris. Uh, Solaris de Lyrenda. I am of House Lyrenda. I see. Um. It was a long time ago, a different life, but uh, what I saw in that basement sort of happened to me as well. Who I was is not someone that I wish to be reminded of very often, and so uh, I apologize wholeheartedly if I have been cold to you in any way. Um, Seeing your, seeing yours reminded me of mine. I I understand. Um, I uh, I haven't been completely forthright with everyone. Um, I mean, this is a, a big part of it, yes, but. My name isn't Ro, or rather, it's it's not a name I went by for most of my life. Um, I was a member of House Thrash for a, my whole life. Um, and uh, some, something happened and I haven't quite figured out what, but I'm not welcome there. I'm, I'm not welcome anywhere. So your secrets are safe here. Um. So I think then uh, perhaps we uh, think we keep each other's secrets then. Yeah, 
I think that's, I think that would be uh, prudent. But thank um, you for trusting me. And you me. And I will put my tunic back on and clinch up some of the armor plates. Um, yeah. There's... Okay. Uh, quick thing for DM. Uh, yep. So House Thrask, uh, I would yes. have pretty good understanding, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, you would. Yeah. Definitely. You have worked with members of House Thrash in the past. Gotcha. Not, not me Googling on the side. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. So I will yeah, um, make our way back. As we're going back, um, can I make a perception check if I see any game running around? Sure. Yeah, go ahead and give me a perception check. Let's take a look, see if there's something. Maybe we can bring back the camp and make everyone happy. Uh, 16. 16. You actually see a couple small rabbits kind of running out of the bushes. Ro, do you have that crossbow I gave you? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Right there. I'll point them out and I'll uh, give you guidance. Okay, oh, this never goes well. Just give me a quick attack roll. I sure I will drop it. Um, it didn't go well. It's in seven. Yeah, you miss. <laughs> <laughs> you wait. Did you roll your d four? No. No, it's not for it's, it's not, not for attacks. Happen. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Well, better luck next time. A little um, shaken up today. This has been. Uh, this has been a trip I did not think would uh, harrow me, so. <laughs> yeah, no, me neither. Uh, but uh, we, we've made it so far. Yep. You, yep. We keep yep. watching each other's backs. For sure. Good. All right. We'll so make our way back. All right, so what are the rest of y'all doing while they're all having their conversation? Small fire, uh, getting ready to get, get some shut eye. Okay. Want to look for animal tracks, like around where we are. Okay. And... Give me a survival. Uh, survival. Dun, 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 dun. That is a survivalito 16. All right, with the 16, you're looking around, you see some, you find some wolf tracks, some rabbit. And it also, one of the areas you kind of look through, you see what looks like may, it may have been a herd of elk came running through here recently. <laughs> He's damn elk! <laughs> All right, we're gonna, <laughs> that's okay. Um, at this point, are they, uh, the two of them coming back yet? Yes, yeah. So I looked to him and said, uh, you guys catch anything? Nope. Uh, we tried. Rabbits were too quick. All right. And then I head off in that direction. Okay. So you head off over towards the bushes and the trees. Uh, Steel and Echo, what are you two doing? I am uh, scratching Biscuit's uh, ear and uh, uh, just doing a little bit of... Uh, of tinkering and just maintenance -y stuff, just like okay, ma making sure he's comfy and got everything set up because it was kind of a kind of a quick process. So just just yep. keep keeping it, making sure I get all the bugs out. Okay, yeah, and he he definitely seems to be doing a lot better than immediately following everything. So it's a lot more lively for as much as a uh, robot can be lively, I guess. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just lying on my back, kind of, I'm, my eyes are closed, but I'm not sleeping or anything. Um, just twirling, twirling a dagger in my hand and, and thinking about and processing what's, what's happened so far. Okay. Obviously thinking about the Mornlands and what we, we, uh, encountered, but not, not voicing anything considering how everyone views my, my eagerness for that spot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 
if if I see you like kind of just like musing, like I'd probably pop over and be like, "You gonna you gonna share why you?" Wait, who are you talking to? You. you. Share why I what? Uh, the headlong dash into the scary mist. Oh, um. I can't explain it. It was just felt like it was calling out to me. Did it call out to you in a voice? No, it, it was more of like an instinct and I couldn't really fight it. Huh. Why that is- did you, did you hear something? A voice uh, calling my name. Didn't like it. Didn't like it. Do you know whose voice it was? Or did yeah. it sound familiar? Yeah. Uh, it's um, s- someone that uh, that uh, that I don't think I knew as well as I thought I did. Uh, one of my one of my family from a long time ago. Yeah, I guess maybe I have that in common with my family in the Mornlands. It's it's my main connection to them is that that land and i i'm kind of i know it's dangerous to be there um but i want to explore it and and see if if there's a hint or a possibility that my parents or anyone that i know from before meeting you guys is there but i don't know Maybe we uh, we rest up and, and uh, see what we can learn, and maybe yeah. we come back with more information. Yeah, and and maybe you can you'll get the chance to learn more about whoever called out to you. Yeah, uh, we'll see. But all right, don't don't run into things with it just, just. sorry but like I said, it was an instinct you, you know how how i am with those no i know i can't no. i i okay. didn't mean to scare you guys and things just i lost control um, and that's okay it happens okay taryn you're heading towards those trees and bushes that uh they were at. What are you doing? Uh, I want to look for uh, any any animals in the surrounding area. Any elk? No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm, I'm made there won't be any elk around. I get Hopefully, you. I don't know. I get it. I get it. I get it. Just, just, I'm just okay. Looking. Give me survival. Nine. You don't see any. Nothing. <laughs> Relentless. If I can't find anything, then I'll just head back. The, okay. The tree, you can't do the tree. <laughs> All right. You head back to the camp. All right, who plans on taking the first watch for this evening? I will. I'm uh, I'm feeling a little bit, uh, a little uneasy, so I'm going to sit up for a while. Okay, so the rest of you all bed down, try to get an evening's rest. Um, you're having a uh, cafe and biscuit help out. Okay. So go ahead, give me a perception check with advantage. Uh, just so it's known, I don't know. I don't know how. I doubt it'd be very visible because I'm a, I'm a trained, trained urban bounty hunter. But uh, I am as as well as with Ro, I'm now slightly suspicious of Halceris. Uh, okay. When aren't you suspicious, though? 
Solid question. Uh, Ooh, that aren't is, you suspicious? Like I don't. I feel like you should point out that you're not suspicious instead of pointing out that you are. You know what I mean? For future uh, I'm, 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 just, I'm just saying. I'm. I'm okay. I, yeah, that's true. But I'm just. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Twenty-three. Okay, so with the twenty-three, about an hour into your watch, you're just kind of looking around, and you catch a glimpse of a bright light above you. And you look up, and as you look into the ring of Sybaris shards that float around Eberron, you see one of them, one of the little points seems to be getting brighter and brighter and brighter. Um, Like in a us direction? (laughs) Right now, you just see it getting brighter and brighter. Hey, would, uh, Let's sure. go ahead. No, I say um, I would know uh, as a scientist the uh, shards fall. They fall. Yes. Gravity will take them eventually. Um, normally streaking thousands of miles. Do I feel like this is happening? Like this is so you? Like... Yeah. So you've seen, you have seen shards fall from the sky before, and it looks like it. This is another one falling. Um, after a couple minutes, you see it almost like it starts streaking off a little ways from you as it just gets brighter and bigger. And after, I make, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I make a wish. Okay. What do you wish? Um, I think I, I twiddle my holy symbol, um, and on the, Backside, none of you have ever held my symbol, um, but on the back side of it is uh, two wedding bands are welded to the back of it. And uh, say, uh, I wish I could hear your laugh again. Okay. As you sit there with that memory and that wish, you see. The shard is actually, or this ball of fire is slowly coming closer towards you. <laughs> yeah, in a very, like, almost <laughs> cartoonish, like, oh, it's a pretty star. Oh, oh, that's close. That's very, that's very close. Uh, uh, guys, everyone wake up. Uh, wake up the party. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah. y'all come waking up to what sounds like a panicked Halceris. What is it? What is it? Did Cafe see see this thing? I'm assuming. Yeah, Cafe sees it too. Get a mental picture. I'm going. (laughs) Yeah. I'll just point. I'll just point that. Like, it's not. The sun is not rising. That thing is falling. So you all look up and you just see this speck of light just descending quickly towards the ground. Is that gonna come here? So. Looking at it, go ahead and give me a um, intelligence check. Okay, can I do, can, can I do that as well? <laughs> yeah. I would also like to, because I've been seeing it. Oh, oh check. Intelligence, sorry. Uh, 17. 17? 14. 14. Karen got a 9. nine. Oh, man, don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's going to miss us. It's all right. 22. 22. One. One. <laughs> All right, so Steel. He's looking in look, the wrong direction. Yeah. Looking at this. Wait, where are you looking? I don't see anything. You, you can tell that it's going to impact near you, but you're pretty sure it's going to probably be c- probably a little ways off from your camp. Uh, We're the only ones that can see that. We should, we should uh, go there. Just, uh, yeah, when, when it lands, it's. Uh, can I can I guess a direction? Like, can I tell by like? So is it, is it maybe land? just slightly to the northeast, or from where you're at at the moment. So back where we came from. <laughs> kind of, bit, yeah, ish, yeah. Um, we should be safe here, uh, but um, it's probably gonna land not far from here, and we should definitely go find it because that that's a maybe once in a lifetime that you find one that's. Nobody else sees. <laughs> that's a, that's a nighttime, right? Huh? It's nighttime, right? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so um, I get up 
and put, uh, get, grab my stuff and say, somebody grab bro. And I run towards the direction wherever Steel pointed. Whoa, whoa, just whoa. Wait until whoa. it impacts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay here until it falls. I, I, I think he might. Like, other people can also see that. I'm in the yeah. trees. True, but I don't know if any of them are as close as we are. So, as do we you know see, for sure it's coming for us? It's coming close. As you see it descending, you see a trail of just <clears throat> like almost like dust and light and just almost like a rainbow falling down as it impacts the ground about 200 feet north of you. Now, oh, let's I'm, go. Already, I'm already going towards it. Okay. I'm in the Yep. So oh, as you, speed, we're still in the explosion. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So there, you did, when it, you saw it impact, there was no explosion. The it was just a thud. You just see some dirt and stuff kind of go up, and you see a bright amber glow coming from this impact. Just a space only, potato. It's the only thing That's I it. can see, so I'm going towards it. Yeah, I'm, no, so I'm, you, I'm already running towards it. Yep. So, um, Ro, you can actually kind of see because it's a very clear night. Okay. The moon is out, so you you kind of have some of the moonlight. You can still see. And don't forget you have your spoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> spoon, like in the horror movies when the, the, the light's like swinging oh, yeah. wildly. <laughs> so as you approach where this impact was, you see about a 10-foot diameter crater that goes about two feet down into the ground. Looking into it, you see a large chunk of stone, and you see three shards kind of sticking out of the stone, all three amber in color. And as you get closer, you see what looks like streaks of gold just kind of flowing through the inside of these shards. Can Guys, I'm really tempted to just jump in there. Um, or it may there. still be warm. Be careful. I slide okay. down already. Yeah, I was, I was going to okay. jump and slide yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, down I'm, the I'm, crater. I'm going, I'm going in. Cool with it. Okay. Everybody yeah. going in? Sliding down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Well, Here we go. Okay. Just like so. put our hands to it. As you you can as you start to get closer to this, you can feel some heat radiating off of this chunk. And out of nowhere, almost as if it's coming from all around you, but nowhere at the same time. You all hear a deep, almost soothing voice. Dad. You all need to be prepared for what is to come. Follow the prophecies. All of you go ahead and give me a religion check real quick. Holy moly, what is happening? 21, please. Seven. Seven, okay. 15. 15. Uh, Eight. 15 as well. Okay. I'm supposed to be good at religion. All right. So, Taryn and Ro, you don't really notice it, but the rest of you, you feel as if there is a presence all around you. It doesn't feel like it has any ill intent towards you, it almost feels protective in a way. It feels old and ancient of the world. Can I put a hand on the stone and just say the name? Sybaris? As you do that, you take two points of fire damage as it singes your hand. Oh, you but didn't you just say it was hot? Why would you touch it? As you say the name Sybaris, these shards get brighter and glow. 
for a few seconds and then they go back to how they were prior and you all hear the voice again prepare I think uh, Hal Saris uh, innately just kind of takes a knee <laughs> so like a like this this is like this is unheard of I'll walk over to Ro and, and just be like, this this wasn't the voice you heard, right? Okay. You heard, I look at all house. No, it was it wasn't in front of Tyrion. It was it was to the to the side. Yeah. <laughs> I look at house stairs and, uh, and I say, was that one of your gods? This this is the voice of Cerberus. This is the dragon above. Dragon. So you all do know the story of the yeah. three entities that created all the planes, Sybaris, Eberron, and Kyber. And as they were creating their final plane, which is the mortal plane, Kyber had just, was a cruel entity that decided they wanted dominion over all that lived. And in a rage, tore apart Sybaris, her brother, who is now floating amongst the belt that surrounds Eberron. Eberron, the one of the entities, has become a living prison for Kyber, who, if stories are true, resides deep down in the ground. This, this is, this is beyond myth. This is the, you are the voice of the progenitor dragon. There's no response. And those of you that felt it, you start to feel that presence just kind of fades away. I reach out, I reach out at the crystals to feel like not to touch yet, but to feel it. Is it radio? So as, as you do that, you, you you feel the heat kind of coming off of this, but that's is just really the heat that you feel from it right now. I tried to cast frostbite on the uh, the shard. Okay, you cast frostbite on this lump of rock, and it you, it cools it down. You see some frost kind of develop over it. Can I, you see it, three large Sybaris dragon shards sticking out from this rock that just crashed from the heavens. And I think that is where we're going to go ahead and call it for this evening. <laughs> boy, 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 boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, then. so, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and call it right now. Um, been a great evening i think we got it we had a lot of good uh story came out today a little bit more background on some of our uh our crew here but um we're gonna go ahead and call it call it for tonight we will be back next monday to pick up right here where we left off and before we go raid a friend here we are we do have a few quick reminders for you so <clears throat> uh don't forget to subscribe to the games tavern youtube channel right now Subscribing is free, and uh, you don't miss any of the action and access to uh, our additional content. Your likes and positive comments on the videos give us a boost and help us f uh, find future Tavern Raiders and get them involved. So go over there and check it out. Uh, be sure to go and visit uh, OverheadGames.com and check out their awesome avatar-making tools. They are wonderful. Um, also, be sure to check out tomorrow night. Uh, it is the premiere episode of the mists uh premiering 7 p.m pacific 10 p.m eastern uh the mists once they have you they never let you go also tomorrow be sure to check out the vulcan weave with legendary dungeon master eric mangi and our friends on the cast over there as they are currently underwater blah 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 fighting with strange creatures while searching for a mysterious god Right. It's been a pleasure having you all. Definitely look forward to seeing you all next week.
Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.